on board, here board. Let's get this over with. <laughs> well, look who's here. New recruits? Well, <laughs> let's fuck some shit up. Alright, first, some background. Right around the time the quirk started popping up, being more frequent. This is when something else started to occur. Somehow, people are starting getting these different memories that, like, they lived, like, countless times, but it's the same old story, or something changes, or it's the same people, but they look different, it's, you see their faces and all, but it's, something's off. But this is when someone approaches the Hero Association world governments all simultaneously <laughs> must be a work of a quirk but I know this is magic what yes magic is real get over it the way something has happened in which our world has ceased to exist uh, either way, one thing led to another, and uh, those stories still have to go somewhere. Huh? <clears throat> okay. You know the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and, you know, the three... Goats, you know, Mr. Toad, Crane, you know, all those old stories and whatnot. Yeah, those are real. What? Uh, seriously, people here are pretty slow on the uptake. The stories you read before are real. I don't know, I do not know how to say that any more clear. So what you're saying is, yes, and there was another world in which all these stories actually happened, but years of constantly being told, someone changed something to the point where they would keep reliving the stories over and over again, not being able to change it. No matter how much they want to. Uh, huh? What? Think of it like this. Stories are real. They are living beings that apparently someone came to our world and started writing them down and brought them back here. But something wrong happened in which it became an infinite loop for us. And that is a living hell. Especially after hundreds of years of going over the same old story. But then apparently something had to give and our world ceased to exist. But the spirits of those stories, the fables, you could say, still live on. So what you're saying is people are going to start believing that they are these uh, fairy tale characters? Oh no, they will become those fairy tale characters. I mean, they'll still be themselves, but with the added knowledge and everything. Really? Yep. And this is broadcasted all throughout the world and everyone is freaking out. The little, the kids, the little school girls and whatnot and boys who grew up hearing these stories they're actually excited but then he's like you're so Cinderella all of them is real 
Is that... Yes. Wait, she, she can hear... Oh, yes, I can hear all of you. You see... I think I... <laughs> Should I tell you guys that Blame Mary is real, too? <coughs> what? Oh, yeah, she's real, too. No. Heck, how do you think we felt when she showed up? <sighs> oh, the, the whole mirrors thing, cutting people up. Oh, if anything, if you, if you girls over your sleepovers, if that's a tradition, you might want to cut it out, or she's going to cut you out of the story. And widespread panic starts to envelop the whole globe. People being kind of split. As you can guess, like, one hand, all the stories are real. On the other hand, the stories are fucking real. And that means all the good guys and heroes are the real. As well as the villains. But many years have passed since then, and more stories are being told, getting more popular until it manifests itself as another fable. Thing is, without its original world to go to, it finds itself inhabiting another citizen. <laughs> but by this time, people have gotten more a tone to attune to it. But just to be safe, they are called fables. As well as they are registered. They're not allowed to know which one you are unless you give your consent to let them know about it. So all the heroes, princes, princesses and all that Yeah, but they can go either way. It's like, okay, so yes, I'm this, I'm that. It's the villains who want to keep the whole, yeah, I'm this. I'm the one that did all this a secret. Everyone from Rumble Stiltskin to the Evil Queen and so on and so forth. But then it gets. Till when Izuku is about five. And Izuku sees Bago bullying somebody. Just like Kenny would go in to help. But as soon as he gets beat up, he starts getting angry. The more they hit him, the more his anger starts to elevate. Until they start noticing, wait, did he get hairier? Wait, since it when is his nails as the next thing you see are his fangs, his eyes glowing, yellow eyes staring back at them, fangs drooling, claws fully at attention. Him attacking Bakugo and his friends. The boy who he was saving ran away in fear and went to get some adults, possibly the police. By the time they actually showed up, Izuku had pretty much beaten Bongo and his friends to near death. Inko is horrified at this, wondering what happened, seeing him in this beastly state. Is... What? So she calms him down. She hugs him, telling him it's okay. It works. But all the parents are like, what the hell was that? Ingo having no choice but to escape before anything else happened. In which, yes, she goes straight to the court order and demands an explanation. But he shouldn't have a quirk. That is not a quirk. Izuku's starting to get upset again. About to yell. His voice starts to get deeper. As... You... I'm sorry, Miss Midoriya, but... Like I said, this is not a quirk. 
He's a de- he's, he's he's a fable, possibly. We ran all the tests. He does not have a quirk. That whatever that is is not a quirk. <sighs> what what's wrong with you? I'm sorry. It's just... <sighs> this whole fable thing, them being real. I remember the stories when I was a kid. They would haunt me from time to time. Having lost my sister. What? She didn't heed the warning about Bloody Mary. So, I'm sorry if I don't seem very enthusiastic about telling you that your son may be a fable, but that cannot be no quirk at all. Now, if you would, please. Is... Now what? You find out which one you are. Let's see about your story. As soon as he made it to the facility where they register each and every fable that's been discovered, Izuku's game flashes of his past, or at least his newly shared past. He feels hungry, angry, and having a hard time actually controlling it. You go having to snap him out of it every now and again. So, he performs some a few tests. Oh, that's who you are. Huh? Them giving. And a storybook pointing right at the big bad wolf. This is who you are. I. Ingo just looking. She knows the story of Little Red Riding Hood. She knows what happens to the granny. She knows how it ended for the wolf. That terrifies her. Who's the woodsman? I I cannot divulge that information. I'm sorry. Please, I I don't need my son being in any form of. Don't worry. We allow our fables, or at least those categorized as such, choice to let people know which one they are, or to keep it a secret. It's up to them. But yes, I would advise you to get that anger in check, young man. It'd be very problematic. Especially if the woodsman does learn of you. I have mention the three little pigs. I'm pretty sure they would be upset with you as well. What? But no, no, no that's, that's different. No, it's the same one. What? Well, unless it's multiple wolves. Pretty much, you know, spoken about. It's usually just... The one big bad wolf, the villain. <laughs> Sorry. Your son, at least, he was a 
cold-blooded killer. Uh, wait. The woodsman. Didn't he? Yeah. He cut the wolf open and stuffed stones in his stomach. I would advise you just stay very far away from anyone holding an axe, just in case. Izuku terrified, Inko even more so. Not really for the fact that, yeah, her son is pretty much the Bay Bad Wolf, the villain of both of these stories. Who knows how many more have been told by now. But it's pretty much thinking, like, what would happen if people did learn of this? I mean, some of these villains, yeah, they it's pretty much through circumstances in their life that cause them to turn bad. Evil queen, jealousy, evil stepmother, you know, and so on, and on and on. But the big bad wolf, that's just his nature, isn't it? So she's worried about what this could do to her sweet little boy. If he gets angry enough, Koski, his friend's treatment, will seem like a mercy. Or worse, if someone learns about this, they may have to put the big bad wolf down. So Inko is, of course, terrified. Izuku doesn't get the full grasp, but all he really knows right now is he was technically a villain. The bad guy, someone who's stopped, who always lost at the end. It's, it's like, so I can't be a hero anymore. Inko looking at him just, I'm about to cry. <laughs> no, you, you, you can. Of course you can. You just need to learn how to control your anger and get a new grasp on your abilities. That's all. Really? Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Mom. Of course. As the next day Izuka goes to school, everyone is looking at him with utter shock and disgust. It's pure horror because they know what he did to Bakugo and his goons. It is not pretty at all. They're still in the hospital. So, yeah, he gets some death glares and some cold stares. There's, there's no doubt about that. But it's when there's breaking news and cell phone alerts, mainly on the teacher's devices, but also computers, television. Someone has received, or at least obtained, all the identities of each and every villain. From the last to the very first that was discovered. And guess whose face is plastered right at the top? That's Big Bad Wolf. Everyone looks back at Izuku in utter shock again. But these dead glares turn to faces of pure fear and horror because... If anything, Big Bad Wolf was pretty much un not really one to be trifled with at all. Even other fables feared him, and that goes the same for 
regular people. So yes, the teacher is looking at him all sorts of ways. The students are eyeing him even worse to the point where he, he's starting to feel a bit more anxiety come on. He's starting to get so worked up to the point where he starts to change again. Everyone getting even more scared to a point where the teacher is about to call police. But wait, please. I'm just scared. You're scared. You should be. Just wait until the woodsman. <laughs> You know who he is. He's if you just starting to shift back and forth to his regular human self, back into his more wolf-like state. The only problem is, it's getting harder and harder for him to shift back to a point where he, the finished product. He still has his fangs. His claws are not as long as they would be before, but yeah, you still wouldn't want to get cut by one of them. His ears, his eyes. This is when the teacher looks closer at him. He's not. He's legitimately scared, but so are the other students, so she, like, uh, I can't, them looking at her, like, what, are you going to call them or not? Her putting her phone down is, come with me, young Midoriya, uh, let's, let's take you home, uh, okay. As all students are like, wait, what are you doing? He's not a bad person. Her just walking off with Izuku. And which, yes, Izuku is still hypervalent. He's still nervous. He's wondering, oh no, people know about me. And now they, someone's going to uh, tell the, I don't want to die here. I haven't even become a hero. He's muttering this. The teacher hearing this he just can tell how scary he is. She feels the same fear. Emma name from Izuku. She's just trying to remember. He's still the sweet little boy he was before. He's just a little different. He's still Izuku. He's not to be scared of. Her just completely trying to wipe the fact that who Izuku is as a fable. It helps. At least up to Inko is called and rushed down there. Her getting the whole explanations like, okay, I know what happened. Someone leaked the information, and now all the villains are in trouble. To the point where there are protests within one or two weeks saying that these villains should be sent to Tartarus, prison, or whatever the hell you're going to do. Just get them out of here. We don't want them here. They do not belong here, etc., etc. But Suku, being as young as he is, he, he understands why there's... He didn't do anything. He isn't doing anything wrong, and he asks his mom, "Why are they like this? If I, if I've been good all this time, if I haven't done anything malicious in all my life, it wasn't better that that I'm just the big bad wolf in a story." It's because they fear of what you can do. They, the story of the 
that you're a part of, you were ruthless. And they fear that. They don't see the innocent little boy anymore. They see the monster that you could be. And him seeing it and go shaking. Him trying to cover her. But he's still mid-shift. And Inko sees the worry in his eyes. With... <sighs> You're still my son, but I don't know what how this is gonna. You definitely can't go to that school anymore. As in the Hero Association worldwide and whatnot, these. Okay. We don't know how this information got leaked. We don't know who <laughs> obtained it and why they did this. Hell, they wanted to inform us that we were living with villains. Whatever. <clears throat> Either way, we have proposed uh, we propose a solution. A facility in which to imprison them? No. To teach them. What? What can you possibly teach a villain? They were regular people before any of this happened. All my being one of the main people was just like, oh, some, this is starting to irk me very much. Some of these people were your neighbors, and you turn on them so easily. Okay. Now, this facility is to teach them how to curb the villainous tendencies they had in their previous incarnations. What we plan to do here is rewrite the story. Give them a clean slate in which they can hope for a better life. <laughs> <laughs> do you really think that's gonna work do you really think these villains can change we won't know unless we give them a chance to if we just ostracize them treat them like villains forever you're pretty much guaranteeing their ruin giving them chances to be better can be more beneficial than just labeling them as villains, locking them away, and throwing away the key. <sighs> now, this facility will house every villainous fable as well as their family for protection. Just in case some of you wish to do something problematic. <clears throat> That's what I thought. As, yeah, Izuku, he's pretty much we don't have a choice, do we? Uh, this may be our best option. As soon as he arrived there, you see that it's very re reminiscent of a prison. Izuku and Inko packed up all their stuff in the moving van, and these. Oh. This is going to be our new home for a while. Alright. Nothing to worry about, right? Izuku is still scared. It feels like he's just being... 
persecuted just for something he had no control over. Believe me. There's a lot of that in the world. Yeah, sometimes you just don't see it. Sometimes you don't want to. But it's there. Either way, upon entering it, it doesn't look like a prison at all. If anything, it looks like one of the prisons in Norway. I mean, they... But at the very least, Izuku is turning his head, looking around, seeing that there are a whole heap of heroes, as well as these villainous fables, let's say. At first, he's more or less amazed at seeing so many. He takes off a little notebook, starting to write down each of the ones he can actually recognize. But then, it's... whoa, is that? As All Might starts walking down a flight of stairs, and Izuku, he runs right up to All Might. Everyone looking at like, wait, what is he doing? Is he gonna Oh my just uh... Hmm Izuku tackles All Might and since he wasn't expecting it, All Might goes through a wall with Izuku. Everyone's starting to panic thinking that someone was attacking the number one hero. But this is when All Might's just He's holding Izuku uh... Well just everyone just calm down. It's not what you think. Them seeing how happy Izuku is, seeing it in his eyes, but what? What? Oh, sorry. I, I'm a big fan of All Might. I'm a bit of a fanboy. You're a fanboy of All, all Might. Yeah. Well, technically all heroes, but. All my, especially. As then all the other heroes start to crowd around them. Izuku just passing out due to excitement with a smile on his face. I think this was a little too much hero exposure. That's adorable. Midnight just... Oh, let me hold him. It's, Izuku does have a wolf tail. Is she starts petting him? Inko, like, please don't hurt him. Her seeing his tail is actually wagging. I would never. He's too adorable for that. Like a puppy. So this is the big bad wolf. I would have never guessed. <laughs> That's a. Ugh. If anything, I kind of want to take him home with me. Excuse me? Huh? What? Heck, I'm a dog person. Yes, we, we know your fans. Oh! You did not just. Well, the way you dress. Mm. Yeah, Midnight just feels just <laughs> insulted. It's like, how dare you? And he goes, uh, if you're going to fight, can I have my son back, please? Her just... Oh, right, right. Oh, I, I am very sorry here. And she just... <laughs> sorry. <sighs> So where are we staying? Uh, you are the Midorias, right? Um, follow me. As Endeavor just walks <laughs> down to their whole room, and it's bigger than their apartment was. It has a lot of open space, and considering Izuku started to be more open and less, you could say. 
lone loner esque type. He's he's loving it, but when he, he does just start walking around, he notices. Yeah, this is nowhere near as scary as he thought it would be. But then he sees All Might and Endeavor just walk, getting it. He has to say something. I mean, he embarrasses himself, so he apologizes a lot. And he does ask for the autographs, but All Might already gave him his. Endeavor, like, hesitates. Like, Very well. He's like, Do you think I can be a hero? With this, them both looking, you want to be a hero? Yes. Seriously. Yes, please. Do you think I, them both looking, well, uh, um, Listen, I think you, you actually can, especially with strong abilities as such as yours, I believe, but I will warn you, is you being the fable that you are, uh oh. You think I can't? No, no, I did not say that. Endeavors move aside. I, I, I have ways with children. <clears throat> you can't be a hero, but it's gonna be very difficult considering that you are a fable known for slaughtering innocent people. So, if you can find a way to control that and show people that you are not the big bad wolf, but more like a kind, gentle sort, you can actually win them over easily. Well, not really easily. It may take a while before they actually truly accept you. Which is why you're here in this facility, not just for your protection, but so we can try to help them see that you and the other villainous fables are not so bad. Thank you. Izuku actually walking up to Endeavor, hugging him. It's like, wait, 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 was it a, uh, was a, um, why? As he notices some of his hair is getting stitched, he's like, kid, please, please let me go. You're going to get yourself hurt. Like, as he notices, he hears sizzling. As Izuku's crying, if it hurts that bad, let go. No, that's not why I'm crying. No one said I could be a hero before. Uh, I mean, before I was quirkless, but then I, I thought I had a chance after this started happening. But then I learned that I was. A villain, I, I thought I, I should have just given up, but you, you gave me hope again. Thank you, so much. Uh, oh, uh, I, oh, uh, come on, NG. Uh. You're, you're welcome. Let me just patting easy go on the head. His tail starts wagging. Oh, that's adorable. Did you just shut up? I said nothing. Nothing. All right, uh, you can go now, kid. Uh, we have. Hero work to do. All my just teasing. He's like, oh, he got you. He got you. He started teasing. He's like, oh, shut up before I burn you. Think you'll be bald messing with me. 
It'll be worth it <laughs> just to poke fun at you. Hmm. Maybe. Just maybe. He could surpass all of us. <laughs>